What's up guys? In this video, we're gonna cover, is it financially beneficial for California to do what their proposed pipeline from the Mississippi River all the way down to California, which let's face it, majority of California is running out of water. This goes for the most south southwestern states. So before I get into the video, please click the like button down below and subscribe button. Also share this video to a lot of people because a lot of people and other YouTubers also share topics similar to this current mega construction you're planning to do, but you gotta look at, is it financially feasible? So let's get into it. So first, I'm not gonna support whether or not it should be built or should not be built, but mainly look at the financial, but mainly look at the financial statistics, whether or not is it feasible to be built, and whether or not it would solve this problem permanently or temporarily. So let's get into it. So first, the proposed pipeline for the Mississippi River is gonna cross through multiple states looking at financial standpoint is is a lot of legal trouble you're going to have to go through first of all why does that specific state want to have a pipeline crossing through their state without being paid if they're going to do it they're going to have to make some type of money coming in so it's not crossing through one state it's, let's say it's going to cross through louisiana texas utah colorado so if it's going to cross through all those states and including nevada then they expect to get some sort of revenue or some type of deal to get paid it's like, for example, why can't we just throw, like, cover a whole entire, like, quarter of Utah for a solar panel to make energy for the rest of the 50 states? Why should they do that? That's the question. Why should they provide energy to everyone else and not get paid for it for using their land? That's one of the financial disadvantages. You're really on a leverage against the other state using their property without paying them. So if you do have to pay them, it's going to cost a lot. Next, number two material costs as you know for example as i covered the california's bullet train when i was proposing like what, 1980s and the 19th century during that time why they never finished building it now with all the delays and all the contract agreements and all the people not working on it and the government's failed policies the materials itself became very costly so when you look at construction, including building a new house, you take the initial amount that you are quoted for, and usually you want to multiply that between 25% to even sometimes up to 100%. Because being built depends on the time, depends on the speed, and depends on materials. So for example, the power plant, the salt power plant in Nevada was being built during that time, but the people never People who construct that never thought that power plant, solar power plant, green energy is going to go down in cost. They expect it to go up in cost, which they were greatly wrong, which caused them to be bankrupt. Because if they can't make money, they can't you know, pay off the investors who invested all their money into that company. So in this case, building materials is not going to get any cheaper. It's going to go up in cost, which if they're building a pipeline all the way down from, let's say, Louisiana, Tennessee, around the area where the states where the Mississippi River runs, the longer it takes, the more money and time is gonna take because building materials are not gonna get cheaper. Another thing can go wrong is when you're crossing that many miles of intersection highway, think about all the infrastructure you have to go through. Meaning is besides building money for the pipes, you gotta maybe have to cross through homes, maybe you gotta cross through really difficult terrain. How much money is gonna cost to like, let's say you gotta cross the Rocky Mountains from like Nevada to California. And you have Colorado. You think about it, there's mountains over there. You got to cross through that. It's not as easy as it sounds. So if you cross through all those mountains, how much money is going to cost? That's including on top of building materials that it's going to basically be an arm and a leg. And who's going to pay for it? Taxpayers? Do we want that solution? Because we didn't get a say on that solution. They just provided this one idea and they never provide other ideas because they don't want to pitch it to us. And looking at another financial problems is besides that. So if you got to cross through many states, besides geological issues, you got to cross through uh, private property issues. What happens if it has to cross through like a nearby freeway? What happens to cross through someone's house? What happens to cross through someone's backyard? Then you have to justify basically paying them whatever money or agreement. If they say no, then you're on your, another trap. You're on a trap door right there. You can't go anywhere else. You got to find another solution, which is not a great idea. And breaking down financial statistics, then you got to look at why is California using so much water in the first place? As I mentioned in previous videos, I mentioned similar topics to this. California has a massive population. And you can blame con climate change all at once, but you can't deny the fact that California's population is massive. So, of course, we're going to need a lot of water 
for whatever des desert environment is designed for. It's not designed for a ton of rainfall after all. So you got a lot of people using water. You got Central Valley in California is making a lot of money and growing a lot of fruits and vegetables and products, nuts and berries, and it's something not to be grown in that type of environment and climate. So, but for example, cashews, those special nut trees they have, almonds, they drink a lot of water. So they drink so much water, they drink way more than the rest of the population, which is us. So they take majority of the water, which you can find in other videos like Real Life Lore. You can look at other type of channels that cover California's water problem and whatever water bill they're trying to propose. So you think about all that water coming in, who is it used for? Who is it being paid for? It's being paid to the farmers. For us and the consumers who live in the cities, we don't use as much as the farmland. Then next, you got to answer how much the water is going to cost. So if you guys directly, California builds that pipeline with the other, you know, four states or five states, I believe, that now contribute to this project, so it's California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico. So if you're all contribute buying this coming with the water from Mississippi, then you got to answer the question. Who is going to pay for an amount of usage? How much you're going to charge? Because pumps are going to need to be installed within this water pipeline to pump the water from point A to point B because there's got to be elevation changes and water sometimes have to go up in elevation and maybe if you're lucky, go down in elevation using gravity. So that is another major issue. How much you're going to charge customers for water? Is it going to be more beneficial than what we already have? Or is another solution? For example, desalinization, which San Diego apparently did, but the rest of California doesn't want to do it because all these political issues. Then look at the next financial aspect is who gets the water first and how much water can be pumped from that pipe? Meaning the water's got to go through the most eastern states of the southwestern states, meaning like Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico. They would be the first ones to receive the water. So if they take most of the water, then how much is Nevada and California going to get? That's another issue they have to be answered. So when, since it crossed through those five states are competing for the water, then you have Texas in the other hand saying like, hey, you're crossing my property line. Or if you, if you cross through like Oklahoma, then you say, hey, you're crossing my state property line. We want some revenue too. Then that has another issue to be addressed. And you look at financial impact and ecological impact. Water from the Mississippi has species differ from living from the ones living in the Colorado River. So that is an environmental concern and pipes have to be regulated. For example, seashells were living in the pipes where in Colorado, when they're pumping water through the pipeline, they have to maintain it. That's going to cost money. So is the people who are paying money for the water and the farmers who are paying mo money for the water, is it going to be financially feasible to cover the cost of the pipeline? And the last point to cover is the population of these states are not going to decrease. They're actually going to increase, like it or not. Same with farming. Farming is going to increase, so it's going to take away more water. So instead of efficiently using water, for example, indoor farming, where it uses way more electricity versus water, but electricity in the southern states can be produced by solar, and improving solar energy is becoming cheaper, that's more feasible by then using more water. So eventually, the population will strip the demand. So if Colorado River gets used up, and our population continues growing, what makes a chance of the Mississippi River, which feeding a crap ton of other states, run out of water too? What happens when the Mississippi River runs out of water? Because our canals we dug for, you know, for water for California was not built too long ago. It's, it's about only built about a century ago. So if the Mississippi River starts drying up, then what are you going to do? The whole entire pipeline project is going to have to be scrapped. And same, that's what I thought about the Colorado River. It's going to pump enough water for everyone else. But there's one resource so far where water is almost inexhaustible or it takes a really long time to exhaust, which is the ocean. Or converting water from the air. That was actually a new topic that a lot of people are now hyping on is getting water from the air. Super purified water, so converting water from the ocean. That resource is way more stable. And that technology is way more sustainable versus dragging a pipeline hundreds of miles away and bring water from the east coast of the United States all the way down to the west coast and eventually could cause a lot of problems because if we eventually if that river dries up or our population keeps growing farming keeps growing you know that river won't be able to sustain all of us so look at financial impact personally from looking at all the statistics and all the money and all the concerns especially is involved financially from building his river, I suggest that building that pipeline from the East Coast all the way down to the West Coast is not financially feasible. 
that's all there is to it. So until a better idea is proposed and it's cheaper versus the current situation, I hope you guys like this video. Please click like, share, subscribe. And I'll post more topics like this if they decide to cover this pipeline project and where at least financial feasible or not. So I hope you guys enjoy your day. And also please check out my other videos, especially ones about the saving and investing act, because that one is such a big game changer for the middle class families. Peace.